All right, so I'm going to have a look at um, orders of magnitude here, which really involves three three things, which seem confusing, but actually it's fairly straightforward when you get your head around it. Um, and it's all to do with numbers, so I could write a number, say a thousand. I'm just I'm going to put some units on just to make life easier for us. Uh, let's have grams. Why not? Um, I could write a thousand grams like that. I could also write it like that, as in one kilogram. Or I could write it in standard form. The standard form is the hardest one to get your head around, I think, at first. 1 times 10 to the 3 grams. Now, I think the easiest way to think of this is in terms of um, decimal places. So I'll show you, I suppose, what it really means. Um, first of all, then, then I'll show you the cheap version. So 1 times 10 to the power 3 is the same as saying... Um, 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 okay which is 3 lots of 10 it's 10 times 10 times 10 well 10 times 10 is 100 times other 10 is 1000 1 times 1000 is 1000 so you can see actually these things are they're all the same okay and we tend to use them interchangeably very often in science uh, at high levels you'll use standard form a lot more um, commonly uh, and on an everyday basis in science we tend to use these units but we can write them in, in any way now it turns out that some of these um, things in standard form do have particular units that go with them so for example a thousand is kilo um, a million so if I wrote this as uh, one two three four five six I could put a million grams um, I could call that a megagram capital M for mega uh, we don't see it very often but we could do um, we tend to start using the notation, which would be uh, actually 1 times 10 to 6 grams. Uh, why? Well, because you know, if we get into very big masses, for example, you know, let's say you were measuring the mass of a planet, um, you could use, I'm not sure what the actual unit is or, or the size of the thing, but you tend to probably use standard form um, because it's just much bigger. And these units actually tend to go up in, unit, in, in threes, so kilo, mega, thousand million it's three extra noughts kilo mega and it continues you know you get terra and you get peta you're probably familiar with this with computers uh, but it does go up and also goes down as well we'll, we'll look at that next so um, again I'll, I'll just start with a thousand just so we can uh, keep it all going and I'm gonna write the standard form here one time to three I'm not gonna bother with any units but I'm sure you can work that out if I wrote a hundred it would be one time center two if I wrote ten It'd be 1 times 10 to the 1. Now you can probably see, this is the awkward one actually, you can probably see the pattern here. Uh, the simple way I said you could think of this is you just look at the, the number, the index, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 1, that, that number at the end is called the index, on the indices. Um, you look at that and you say, oh, that's how many noughts there are. If it's 10 to the 3, it's a 1 with 3 noughts. 1 times 10 to the 2, 1 with 2 noughts. Notice this is an awkward one. Because it's one times ten to the naught. Well, yeah, it just means one. You know, <laughs> um, effectively, one times no tens, if you like. Uh, but if you keep going, I'll write the numbers first of all. Okay, you just go down to negative indices. One times ten to the minus one. One times ten to the minus two. One times ten to the minus three. Now. One way you can think of it is to take the indices and just say, well, it's a one with three noughts before it, or it's a one with two noughts before it. What you do have to remember is the decimal point. I mean, another way you could think of it is it's three places after the decimal point, but you've got to remember the last number is, is going to be a, a one or whatever it's going to be. Okay? So it doesn't matter which way around you remember it. Um, we could write uh, minus three as a unit, for example, um, one times 10 to the minus three meters is the same as saying one millimeter. Okay, so that unit there, that measurement there is one millimeter. This unit here is um, one times 10 to the three meters. That's what we're using. Now the orders of magnitude um, part of this is a way to compare values um, in, in a rough way of, of things being sort of 10 times bigger or 10 times smaller. So if something's 10 times bigger, you say it is an order of magnitude bigger. 
um, if it's 10 times smaller you could say it's an order of magnitude smaller. Uh, the reason this is sort of interesting or, or useful I suppose is if you start making a jump of more than two or at least two orders of magnitude so 10 and a thousand that's gone up two orders of magnitude it's gone up by 10 and up by another 10. Um, once you start making a jump of two orders of magnitude you tend to find a different set of rules apply um, if we take something in the size of maybe um, okay well let, let's think of something in uh, let's, let's think of something that weighs 10 grams and then something that weighs a thousand grams okay it's two orders of magnitude bigger I've gone up two steps I'll show it to calculate in a second um, something that weighs 10 grams is pretty light and the effects of gravity on it and the effects of other forces on it you know it might be stick down to things more the effect of gravity is going to be much stronger it's going to keep it in place so it's a thousand grams it's going to fall off your table it's going to um it's going to have a lot more force if we um sorry a lot more momentum if it's moving um let me give you another version something that is 10 meters long versus something that is a thousand meters long um I'm trying to think of something in biological terms, but uh, I, I can't really. I'm, I'm, you know, we're probably looking at physics terms here. Ten meters is maybe the size of a classroom. A thousand meters is a kilometer. It's just physically, by going up at least two orders of magnitude, you're in a different realm almost of of measurements. I know the the same measurements, but it helps to think in that way. You know, if we go down the other way, something in the one meter sort of range, like a human. Let's go down two orders of magnitude. So let's go down three orders of magnitude. Ding, ding, ding. We've gone down to three and we're in the um, millimetre range. It's a completely different world. You know, things at that size, little insects and things, are they get stuck in water droplets. They they have trouble not flying because they just get blown away in the, the air. And so um, orders of magnitude is, is important to sort of fix your head that um, we like to deal with things in the same order of magnitude it, it's almost a different you know level if you're looking at cells which are down in the sort of uh, micrometer range one times ten to minus six you've got to use a different te you can't study cells in the way that you would study um you know a human it, it's a different different way of looking at things and in order to work out the orders of magnitude um you simply move and this is the kind of question to get on it um you know let's say if it said how much bigger is uh, how many orders of magnitude bigger is a hundred compared to um, what about a thousandth? Well, what you do is you you just look at what the difference is between the indices. So it's two and minus three. Well, the difference there is five. You know, it, it's just adding up numbers of numbers and negative numbers. You know, if you want to do a, a number line to sort of make you uh, make it easier. Um, you, know, you can think of it like that how much how many steps I've got to go one two three four five steps so you would say it's five orders of magnitude bigger something that's a hundred meters big is five orders of magnitude bigger than something that is one millimeter big uh, obviously it's easier if you're working so with whole numbers you know a thousand is one order of magnitude bigger than a hundred uh, but it still works uh, it's pretty straightforward just look at the index at the end um, and see what the difference is in the numbers and that's how you you would calculate or express orders of magnitude